Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can iterate over arrays and collections in Kotlin using while loops, ranges, and the repeat function. Now this video is a follow-up to a previous one in which we looked at how to iterate using a number of different types of for loops. This video will differ in that it will look at while loops, it'll look at the repeat function, and then it'll also look at using int ranges within for loops to customize the behavior of those for loops and make it easier for us to control how the iteration is done. So let's start off by taking a look at the repeat function. So we'll put our cursor into our main function here. And to invoke the repeat function, we can type repeat and we'll see that the autocomplete is now showing us that function from the standard library. We'll see that it takes an int, which is the number of times to repeat, as well as an action function that will control what we want to happen on each iteration. So in this case, I'll pass in the value of 10. And then we can put the curly braces outside of the parentheses because we have that nice lambda syntax in Kotlin. And now in this case, I want to print out the index, which in this case, we can reference as it. If we wanted to make this more explicit, we could come up here and define index, and we can change our index right here. Now, if we hit run, we can see that we printed out all the values between zero and nine. So that gives us an idea then of what repeat does. It's simply going to repeat something n number of specified times, and each time when our action function is called, the index of the current iteration will be passed in. If we go into the implementation of the repeat function, we can see here how this is called. And you see internally, it's primarily a for loop with the index in the range of zero until times, which is the value we passed in, and then it calls the action. So there's really nothing too special going on here behind the scenes. It's pretty much a simple for loop, but that syntax is a little bit easier for us to work with. Let's jump into the next example. So now in this example, we're going to take a look at the for loop using the same type of range functions that we just saw in the implementation of the repeat function. So again, we'll come into our main, we'll say for index in zero until 10. And then we're going to print out the value of index. Now, if we run this, we'll see that we have the numbers zero through nine printed out to the console. So what until does is it generates a range going from the first value on the left and to the value on the right, non-inclusive, meaning it does not include this value here on the right. And if we go to until, we see that it is an infix function on the int type and it returns an int range. Int range is a class that allows us to iterate over the values in that range in a very simple manner. Another similar way that we can iterate using a range is by saying for index in zero dot dot, in this case we'll do 10 again, print line index. This dot dot syntax here, again, is a shorthand for defining an int range. So if we run this, we'll see now that we have the values zero through 10 printed out. So you see, this is a difference between using an int range, using this dot dot syntax versus the until infix function. In this case right here, the 10 is included in the range, whereas using until 10 is not included. So one place you might want to use this is if you're thinking about using 
a length or size operator on a collection and subtracting one to get the index into that collection. By using until, you don't have to worry about those off by one subtractions or errors. It will generate an int range of only the values you're interested in. So now when we're using ranges, it's a convenient way of generating a progression of values that you can then act on. So in this case, in the index in zero until 10 expression here, we're saying that we're going to generate each value from zero until 10. So effectively that it's going to generate zero through nine for us. Now, what if we wanted to only print out the odd numbered values? Now, traditionally we would handle that here in the function block of each iteration. However, in Kotlin, when dealing with ranges, there are some additional functionality available to us to control what that step function looks like. So in this case, if we only wanted to actually iterate over every other value in this range, we could additionally add step two to this for loop definition. Now, if we run this, we'll now see that we're only getting the even values. Now, in all of these examples, we've been looking at iterating from zero up to 10. But what about if we wanted to do that in reverse? Well, we can use another useful infix function here to generate an int range that goes from the larger value down to zero. So that might look something like this. For index in 10, and then we'll use the down to function, and then we'll provide zero. And then we can print out that value. So now if we run this, we'll see we have 10 from zero. All of those numbers will be printed out. So this is completely inclusive, including all of the values in the range. And just like in the previous example, we can use the step function to modify how our counter is modified. So in this case, we will step down by two each time. And if we run this, we can see that output is decrementing by two on each iteration. Int ranges can actually be used on their own to immediately generate an iterable set of values to use in our iteration. So for example, we could say in parentheses zero dot dot 10. This is going to generate our range of values from zero to 10 inclusive. Now we can say dot for each and then we could say index print line index. So this is going to iterate over all the values from zero to 10 inclusive. And then we'll use that for each function to get access to each of those indices and print that value out. So if we run this, we will now see again, zero through 10 printed out to our console. Now we've looked a lot at for loops or some different variations of for loops. But Kotlin also has support for while loops and do while loops. A basic example of a while loop might look like this. We'll define our counter var index equals zero. Then we'll come down here and define our while loop condition while index less than 10. Now in this case, we want to print out the index value each time. So we'll say print line index. And now we need to increment our counter. So once we do that, if we run this, we'll now see that we have the values zero through nine. And once the value increments to 10, when it comes back up to this expression the next time, it will no longer be true. And so we will exit the while loop. So in this case, that condition is checked at least once before any work is done. Now, this is an important distinction when looking at a do while loop. So we can set the do while loop up in much the same way. We'll define our counter var index equals zero. Now we'll come down here and define our do block. This will be what we will run on each iteration. So in this case, again, we will print out index and then increment our counter. 
Then we'll define our while conditional, which will be again index less than 10. Now if we run this, this will be guaranteed to run at least one time and print out the value of index before checking the conditional. So in this case, if we run this, we'll see that the output looks just the same as before, 0 through 9. However, if we modify this to let's say make that index value 10 initially, we'll see that this will run still at least one time. And you see, just like I expected, we see the value of 10. This is because of that difference where in the do while loop, it's guaranteed to run once. So the first time index is 10, we print it out, we increment, we check the condition, in which case it is false, and so the while loop will terminate. And that's it for this video. We've taken a look at iterating with while loops, using int ranges, and the repeat function. So hopefully this has given you a better idea of how you can iterate over arrays, collections, and how you can modify those to fit your specific use cases. Thanks for watching. Until next time.